In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to save the images from your old negatives and how to bring them into your digital life in the 21st century. It's not hard to do and it doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes time. And by that, I mean that this is something that you can plug away at for weeks or even months, but we're talking about a minute out of every hour to change a negative over and hit scan. Now to start with, here on the left you've got an image that is a high resolution scan of an original print done 25 years ago. And you can see there's huge color cast, uh, there's not a tremendous amount of detail in there. It's, it's okay, but it's really not great. The image on the right is a high resolution scan done from the original negative uh, with some dust removal applied to it and then about a minute and a half of manipulation in the Windows 10 Photos app to make something acceptable out of that original image. So let's get started. I'm going to walk you through on how to set up your scanner and how to lay down your negatives. So I went and bought myself the Epson V550. They also have a V600 model. Uh, these should range anywhere from about 180 bucks to 250 depending on uh, where you live and what currency you're paying with. Um, while you're buying your scanner, don't forget, uh, grab yourself a can of dust off, uh, air compressed air removal as well. Now, the first thing you need to do is load the film into the holder. Um, so it's going to go face down and upside down. So what I mean by that is there's two sides to a piece of film, obviously. One side is kind of shinier than the other. The shiny side is the front, and it's going to go face down on the scanner, okay, in the holder. The dull side faces up. The other way to tell front to back is when you're looking at the front of the film, you'll be able to read the type and any numbers or letters that are on there. So when you finally put it into the holder, you should be looking at the dull side, the text should be backwards, and everybody should be upside down, so heads down towards the bottom, and the sky or the water or um, the base of the trees, the earth, is going to be at the top of the image as you look at it, laying on the scanner bed. All right, so you've plugged your scanner in, you've installed the software, and we're going to get it set up to the specs that we want to use for scanning stuff. So there is a full auto mode, but we're going to play with these settings a little bit. And this is not terribly geeky stuff to do. So we're going to switch to professional mode. And the reason we're choosing professional mode is we want to get the most raw data out of these image scans and we can do the compression and everything else to make the images more reasonable later. So we've gone into professional mode and we're going to make sure under our document type we're scanning film. You would use reflective if you were scanning an actual picture. We're going to choose color negative film unless you're choosing or unless you're scanning slides. We want 48-bit color. We want 6400 for the DPI. That is the maximum that this scanner can do optically. Everything above that is just uh, extrapolation. Okay, grain reduction we're going to leave alone, color restoration we're going to leave alone, backlight correction, we may use that sometimes, we'll get to that, dust removal we're going to leave alone, and digitalized technology we can't check yet. So we need to go down here to the file save settings, and here under options, we want to set the JPEG compression level to 1, which is basically no compression. So we're going to end up like with 25 megabyte images, and we'll do all the compression after we've done our manipula manipulation of the image. Okay, so that's fine. And then we hit preview. Okay, so here are our images from the negatives. 
Now the first thing we're going to do, we've got an image here that was obviously film being loaded, so we're going to uncheck that one. And everything else looks good. Now if we had an image that was sideways, we could select it and then rotate the frame until we got it where we needed it. If you have an image where the text is backwards, you can do the mirroring button, but really what you need to do is go open the scanner up, turn your negative over, and then do your preview again. So once we're happy with the orientation, we're going to select all, and then we're going to select digital ice. And this is a sort of a more intelligent kind of dust removal. And then you hit scan. All right, so we've got our images scanned in and well let's let's actually have a look at the first image that we started with so this is what happens without digital ice there's color correction I don't like that and here's digital ice applied and nothing else done to the image now we've got a few things that we want to touch up here we've got a dot here another one there so we're gonna go into edit And right off the bat, the first thing I like to try is just straight off enhance your photo. And whoa, that's a little much. So let's slide that down a little bit. And we can, this green that showed up, we can get rid of that too. Next thing is we're going to go over to adjust. We're going to start with a spot fix. And we just cover these dots up. Zoom in a little. Try and get the touch up dot about the same size. as the touch up you're applying so it doesn't smush too much of the image. Get one there. And one there. And we get rid of that one too. All right. So that's a pretty good start. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to get that black back in. So if we add little in the shadow that's going to black and let's see make it a little more vibrant we'll watch that purple now I work on the just noticeable difference so that's too far I'll just add so there's zero again there's taking too much away so we're popping the color and then we're just going to play with the warmth to get the skin tones a little closer to what they actually look like and that wasn't hard and it's not bad all right so we can save that and the other one we're going to have a look at here All right, this one a cello. So because the water droplets, we have a Xenon flash back in the day on all of our pictures. Does a great job of freezing all the water. But we do have some things that are not water droplets. They are actually, and of course it would be really hard for the digital ice to figure out that these are dust or scratches in the negatives. You can see there's actually this picture, unfortunately, there's that's probably beyond being able to repair but for the purposes of this demonstration we're going to again go after the spots that the digital ice missed it does a great job of really uh, identifying what is actually and you see here I'm going to take you know, just a little no too far come on I'm going to do this one in pieces. Here we go. There's another one right there. Come on. Oh, and that one right there. Okay, so this was a good picture to pick for the demo.
because it really shows what you can do with shadows and highlights. So if we, again, we're going to go back to enhance. First thing I like to do is hit the enhance button and dial that down just a little. And it actually looks pretty good just like that. But let's see what we get if we play with the shadow. So that's all the way down and there's blown out. If we take the shadows down a little bit, that imperfection in the negative almost completely disappears. <laughs> and maybe just add a little bit of color. That's too blue, too green. We go that too far. And about there looks good. And we're going to drop this down and add just a little bit of warmth in there. Look at that. It looks like a person again. And I noticed one other spot that we wanted to spot fix. A couple of them up here, actually. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Click save. So you can see that this isn't hard. You just sort of play around with the sliders and again, stick with the just noticeable difference. The minute that you're like, whoa, that's a little bit too much, or I noticed that, go back just a little bit and you're probably hitting the right spot for where the adjustment needs to be. So now we've scanned a bunch of images um, maybe even hundreds of them, and they're all pretty big, about 30 megabytes a piece, 20, 20 25, 30 megabytes um, for these images, the way that we set the scanner up. So we need to compress them and make them a little more reasonable. So I looked around, and the first thing that happens when you search around the web for photo compression stuff is you get a whole pile of uh, reviews on apps that you're downloading a Win32 program onto your computer and you're not really sure if it has a virus and all that kind of stuff. So I much prefer to stick to something in the store. And I looked around in the store and the app that I settled on after trying a bunch was this one, a Photo Compressor by Duckhead Software. They have a light version. Uh, I think it's limited to maybe like 200 images. And because I'm doing so many, I was like, four bucks fine install it works great i'm happy with it so this is the app and then this itself is the app and i'm just going to do one here to show you how this works so you just oops, sorry drag it all the way across to here and you choose your compression level i've got it set at 60 percent there's a little slider thing this is a nice like oh look there's no difference but I don't think in an image that size or even full screen you're going to notice whether or not it's compressing artifacts and stuff. Anyway, 60% um, brings it down to a size that I'm comfortable with. It's about it's under 5 megabytes for this image. So we're just going to click Start. And I've got it going to my How to Scan folder. Oh, I don't want to select a folder. I want to go to that one. So here's the compressed image. It's 4.24 uh, megabytes now and much easier to deal with. But well worth the $4 investment. So the last thing to do is to correct the metadata associated with these pictures so that they have their proper place in the timeline of my life. So I happen to know that these pictures were taken October 13th in Baden-Baden, Germany. Oh, in 1992. So right now, September 2017. So if we scroll down here, you can see these pictures. If I go look at file info, right down to the fact that this was taken at 
Desert Valley High School in Tucson, Arizona. And I think that's pretty cool. So here's how you can do the same thing. So for Baden Baden, I did a quick little bit of research, did a search, found the place that we stayed at, and I got an address. So I'm using, uh, again, another app from the store. Now this isn't the prettiest app, but it works. Uh, it's called XF Geotagger by Tony Soft. And this is what it looks like. So I'm going to, I don't like that. Choose a folder. And in this case, I've put one on the desktop called XF Geotagger. And there's the picture. And I need to add a GPS position. So where'd my website go? There we go. So I'm going to check this box. And we have an address, which is Romer Platz 1. Zip code is 76530. Biden, Biden. So if we zoom in here, we get an aerial view. And I can actually play around with the angle that I'm looking at. And I can rotate it. But you see right there, that's where those pictures were taken. And we're going to change the date here to October 13th. Oops, too far. 1992. Click OK. Do that again. I haven't looked into which one actually matters. I just do both. Okay, 1992. Okay, click Save. And now that picture, and if I had uh, an entire group of pictures that were all taken in the same place it would do all of them at the same time um, but now this picture is located in time and place where it should be 